Right, hi guys. So in this video, we are just going to conclude our Alaska Discovery Princess uh, little series. Just going to give you a little talk about how we boot eat, you know, all that kind of thing. How much it cost. <laughs> That's the main thing, how much it cost. You know, we're just going to run down the trip, what we thought, any ideas, any tips, yada, 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 that kind of thing. Um, and we just want to say as well, uh, thank you so much for watching all of the videos and all of the lovely comments that you leave. We, we do really appreciate yes. it. And we did film from Manchester and yep. flying, first we went to Vancouver and filming all that. Then we did the cruise and ended up in Seattle. So we filmed all them videos over the space of 11 days. I think it was so 15. we were. 15 yeah. videos over the space of the 11 days. So we were knackered by the end of it. And um, yeah, we just want to say thank you so much for watching them all. We're then getting on to the P&O Arvia ship and that was around the Mediterranean. Mm -hmm. So we've got a load of them videos going out and we've just booked something else a bit exciting for in a couple of months time. Yes. So um, yeah. We won't, we won't tell you what that is. <laughs> in due course. Yes, we'll uh, let you <laughs> sweat on that one. But anyway, not future cruises, yes. let's uh, review the Discovery Princess, so let's get into it. Right, so the number one question that we get is, who did you book with? Did you do it as a package? Did you do things separately? How much did it cost? So we're gonna get into all that now. So what we did was 11 nights in total. We did two nights in Vancouver, seven nights on the Discovery Princess, yeah. our first time cruising yes. with Princess Cruises, yeah. and then we did two nights in Seattle. Mm -hmm. The itinerary on the Discovery Princess was a little bit different. We've had a few comments on this. It's, yeah. it's not a regular one. Didn't so realize that. <laughs> we were the first cruise of the season on the Discovery Princess and it went from Vancouver where a lot of the ones after are just going Seattle to Seattle. So we were lucky to get the two nights in Vancouver as well, which was nice. Yeah, we got to see the, got to go obviously to Canada yeah. and then we got to see a new state towards Seattle, which was nice yeah, as well. Yeah, so we did, from Vancouver, we went to uh, Juneau, Sitka, Ketchikan. Mm -hmm. and we went to the Hubbard Glacier as well. I think they call that the Inside Passage. Yes, uh, there's, a couple, correct, there's ones, a couple of different yeah. ones, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it was nice, because we, we did enjoy the Vancouver part mm -hmm. of it as well. It was nice to see a different country, like Stacey said. Now, if you do want this, let us know in the comments. We are tempted to do a separate, like, Alaska tips video, because we do get some people asking for tips. So if, if it's something you'd like to see, just let us know down below. It could be a future video. Yeah, because we're going to make this specifically more about cost and what it was like to cruise with Princess. So yeah. probably we'll end up doing yeah. it eventually. So yeah, just to give you some Alaska cruise tips. Yeah. So you've probably, with a few of our cruises now, heard this company mentioned. And we do research lots of different options all the time, booking direct through the cruise company, yeah. doing things separately. But... We're not getting paid to say this. They, they just came out the cheapest. Were. Yeah, they just came out cheapest. And the company that we used was Cruise Nation, mm -hmm. and we booked everything as a package. Yeah, I know. Like, there's a you know, people say to us, "Oh, I, I book with Igloo," or there's lots of different cruise package companies. So actually, everything that we had through the package, when we priced up the exact same thing mm -hmm. separately it came out more expensive, yeah. so we were like, we may as well book it as a package when it's cheaper, yeah. and you've also got the protection of knowing it's a package holiday. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Now the peace of mind. Yeah, of course. Now, the flights were with British Airways. Sounds silly. We had Manchester to Heathrow, and then Heathrow to Vancouver on the way, mm -hmm. and then on the way back, we had Seattle to Heathrow, Heathrow to Manchester. It was £10 more for the both of us for that Manchester to Heathrow flight than it yeah. was for us to just go from Heathrow direct. Mm -hmm. Now when you, because we live in Stoke, yeah. so we're a few hours away from Heathrow. Yeah, <laughs> we're a, a few hours from Heathrow and the parking was more expensive down there. It would have been mm -hmm. the time it took to drive down there. You know, all that extra, it was just easier and cheaper for us to fly from Manchester. Now I will say as well, because you can book Cruise Nation online or you can call them up. Yeah. We ended up ringing them because when we first looked on Cruise Nation, yeah, good point. it was showing Manchester to somewhere in America yeah. about an hour 40 layover, minutes. 40 minutes 40 layover, minutes. which we were like, there's no chance no of doing chance. that. Um, and then it was straight on to Vancouver. Mm -hmm. So don't just look straight away and think that's the only flight option. 
we rang them yeah. and said there's no way we can we can do this 40 minute connecting flight and even then we're like yeah that's too short yeah. that's just what automatically i don't know why i'm pretending like i'm on the phone to me you get the gist Hello. but <laughs> it's so uh, we rang them up yeah and ex, you know, said to them, we, we don't like this flight, and they researched all other options. So don't just yeah, think yeah. that flight that they've got on there is the only option for you. No. Because like Kev just said, we also added on the Manchester to Heathrow. Yeah. We changed it to Heathrow because and then to Vancouver. it does give you, it, there was more different flights, but they were all basically the same kind of go to America very short layover. So I'm a warrior as it is. Oh, Imagine I would have never. 40 minute layover. We wouldn't have done a 40 minute <laughs> layover. If you're interested, it's always worth looking. And then they give you a choice of hotels as well. So obviously we had two nights in Vancouver, two nights in Seattle. And I think it was the Vancouver one, we kept the one that was already on there. Because yeah. it does give you a few to pick from. What it does is it includes one hotel, say in Vancouver, in with that price. Yeah. And then what it does is give you six or seven other options that might be... £20 per person more. Or a lot more. <laughs> we'll, we stayed at the Hotel Balmont, Vancouver, but what I would say is research all them options mm. because even though our hotels were fine, yeah. it depends on what you want to do. So definitely research the options. Because that's what yeah. we did for Seattle. So we kept the Balmont Because that was Vancouver. fine and that was in the included price. We didn't need to pay more. No, and then the, we swapped the Seattle one. I think that worked out at £50 extra each. Yeah. But it was in a better location. Mm -hmm. It was close to the Space Needle, close to Pipe Pikes Market, close to the baseball stadium. So these are things we just Google map it and go, okay, so this hotel's here. It's not very good for this, but it's yeah. good for that. What do we want to do exactly. and how does that fit in with yeah. where the hotel is based? So the cost altogether to Cruise Nation for the flights of British Airways, that's changing the flights, like Kev said, yep. from Manchester Heathrow, Heathrow to Vancouver with the cruise on the Discovery Princess for the seven nights around Alaska mm -hmm. and then the hotels and again like Kev said we paid extra to stop to move the one in Seattle yep. to the one that wasn't included so the total for oh, that oh and then your flights back as well sorry flight, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, flight, we had to come back unfortunately <laughs> but yeah the flights back as well that yeah. was return so all that the total cost was this is for the both of yep. us was three thousand five hundred and thirty one pounds and forty eight pence. Yes. Now that's for the both of us. Now yep. this was booked about four months before we went. Yeah. Four. Yeah. Four or five months. Four or five like months. That. It wasn't past the five no. month mark. It was four to five months. Yeah. yeah before so it wasn't we went. That far in advance. Which I must say, when we first started looking at the idea to cruise into Alaska. I mean, £3,000 is still a lot of money. I thought it was going to be a lot more. Yeah. There's, there's bits that we had to add on that we'll explain in a minute. If you want to sit together with British Airways, select your seat. It's mm. very expensive. It cost, that was an extra £200 for the both of us. Yeah. So we, we couldn't do that straight away when we booked. No. That was about a month before. Yeah, 30 think. days before. Yeah. So uh, that's something to bear in mind, but that's yeah. another cost to add on as well because Stacey's... Not the best flyer. She's getting better. You're getting better. But I'm getting better. I still wouldn't like be set up, sat apart next to some weirdo <laughs> for eight at nine hours. I was going to say, even if I was, I was 100% completely fine with yeah. um, flying, I still I like I sitting next to yeah, you. Yeah, because you lean all over me. Yeah. <laughs> I can't lean on a stranger's shoulder, can no, I? I know. Well, I might, but... Yeah. <laughs> but uh, we'll move on then to, like, we, are, we had a drinks package on the mm -hmm. ship. This is the first time we've ever had one. Yes. Because we don't really drink. So, but we had the soda package. And we didn't book that at the time of booking it with Cruise Nation. No. Once we'd booked and we had the confirmation through, we logged on to the Princess website and yes. booked it through then. So you don't have to automatically boot the drink packages no. at the time with Cruise Nation. Unless they've got that a drink offer on or offer something on. like that that you're interested in. Yeah. But yeah, we had the soda package, which was a really, really good package, which we'll get into after. That was £215.46 for the both of us. Yeah. Now, you know, you think, oh, it's a little bit much, but it was worth it. We got our money's worth, and we'll explain that after. Especially, obviously, this is about the Discovery Princess in general, mm -hmm. but especially with I, with our I, with our itinerary, because it was going to Alaska. Normally, we take pops. I know some cruise lines allow it, some don't. Yeah. I'm pretty sure Princess do, but we weren't sure how easy it was to get things in Alaska, no. like from a supermarket. So that's why we and we didn't want we to have to package. waste yeah. our time in the port doing no, that because either. Because we obviously flew as well, not going from Southampton. Yeah. we couldn't take a suitcase no. full of cans on like so, we normally do yeah. when we go from Southampton. Exactly. <laughs> uh, princess don't include tips, no. gratuities. So we had to pay these on top. These were ninety-seven pound forty-four pence each, 
And once again, we paid this once boot on the princess website same as we did with the drinks package yeah you can either pre-boot that or do it on board but i think once we were booking the drinks package i mm. think it came up then and we were like you know what we may as well just get them both out the way yeah. now i know some people don't like to pay this do you knock it off once you're on board yeah we you know are you one of people it. It was, well the, we have very good service on there yes. so it, it, it was definitely earned <laughs> exactly so just quickly these prices we're mentioning are just like the big expensive kind of things we're not going to mention every little uber we had starbucks coffees and tim hortons and all those kind of things these are just the Donuts, big nuts no, yeah souvenirs yeah. that we brought <laughs> so these are just the big big ticket items let's call them yes we have done videos on these and we mention mm -hmm. We link in those videos who we boot these excursions yes. with. But we did two excursions when when we were in Alaska mm -hmm. and they were both with external companies. So we didn't boot th those through Princess. No. They were a lot more expensive. On so Princess, they were, yeah. Exactly, yeah. So if you check out those port videos, we've linked down who we've boot with, but I'll just say now how, how much it cost yeah. us. So in Juno, we did the glacier and whale watching tour. Now that was... $294.53, I just got it written down, sorry, underneath there, $294.53 for the cents, cents. 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 <laughs> dollars and 53 cents. cents, yeah, for the both of us, and that included at the time of booking, there was a 15% discount yeah. on there. That... Go and watch that video if you're interested, because I explain on where to look for it on the website and stuff, so it's pretty easy. And if you're thinking, you know, and I know that that's, quite expensive but if you want to see princesses prices that they were Ooh. charging for something similar it was all that was more like that price each yeah it wasn't far yeah. off each yeah it was very expensive and then the next one we did we did the Sitka premium tour mm -hmm. like I say once again it's in the Sitka video who we booked to with and all that stuff and that was 158 dollars plus tax eat no for both of us sorry and that equaled 167 dollars 48 cents now oh you said cents yes now, <laughs> not pence when we say dollars these are american dollars not canadian dollars yes and that was for a two and a half hour like trip to the bears and the raptors and the mm -hmm. viewing points stuff like that so if you're interested i know we're not all that's another one not a lot of the cruises go to sitka they go to skagway skagway yeah so i'm glad we did this one because i know skagway there's a train trip and I'm not sure what else there is and I really want to go to Bear Sanctuary so I'm glad we did yeah. this this uh, itinerary on the our The train cruise. does look beautiful in Skagway but yeah. you really wanted to see this Bear Sanctuary. Yeah. <laughs> right so like we said it was our first time cruising with Princess and it was on the absolute gorgeous ship the discovery princess which is the newest in the princess fleet at time of filming at time of filming they've got, they've got some princess coming out next year that, yes. that looks amazing but yeah. that's that's a whole lot another video because we'd like to do that one yeah. as well so yeah it was it only done its maiden voyage on in march 2022 so it was literally just over a year old mm. when we went on now it does all 3660 passengers there was about 3400 and yes. something when we were on there and the great thing about the Discovery Princess is obviously all the Princess Cruises now have got this Princess Medallion and the Princess Medallion app. Yep. And this was built from scratch with it in mind. Yeah, it was so the first it, one once we'll get Kev will speak more about that in a sec, but it's a great system that the, the Princess Cruises have. When we were on the ship, they kept the captain kept doing on his horn this theme tune, and yeah. we were like What's that? Yeah. And since Googling it when we get back, apparently the big thing about Princess Cruises, I'll be honest with you, I'd never heard of it, is this TV show called The Love Boat. I'm guessing it's obviously and American, it, probably. I think it started off on a Princess Cruise ship, right, and okay. obviously, I don't even know what it's about. Let us know, have you watched it? Was yeah. it any good? But anyway, they kept on honking this theme tune from The, the Love Boat anyway. I don't know. <laughs> and while we're talking about the medallion and the app, I've done a whole video on this if you are going on a Discovery Princess cruise or any other Princess uh, cruise because go watch that. It's it's easier to watch all this before you go on board and yeah. so you know the gist of how it works. But like Stay says, it's such a great system. It we, really, really is great. We've cruised with MSC and p and mm -hmm. and they're the only other cruise lines we've done so far. We want to try many more, but so far it's been the best technology yeah. that we've ever had. Yes. Like, and I don't know. We can only speak for us, but in the week that we used it, it didn't go down on no. us at all. So you don't, you don't get a cruise card now, you get a medallion, mm -hmm. which is like a little uh, geo tag. If you know like an, an air, one of the Apple air tags, it looks exactly the same as that. It tracks you where you go on the ship. That lets you scan on and off, buy sh stuff mm -hmm. in the shops, gets you in your cabin, all that kind of stuff. It's brilliant. 
Yeah. And then you've got the app that goes along with it, which, what can't you do on this app? Like I say, I'm not going to go through everything because no. I've done an in-depth video on this. But it literally, if you want to sit there, order a drink on the app and have it delivered to you. That's, that was my like favourite feature. Yes. That was just amazing. Now, yeah. because we had the drinks package, like we said, the soda one. What we do at <laughs> night was when we were walking back to the cabin, because you can select if you want it where you are at that point or to your cabin, your stateroom. Mm. We were having like cans of Coke delivered back to the room. And then by the time we got there, they were there a few minutes after us. And we just kept stocking up on them and keeping them in the fridge. It made me laugh on the app video that you did because I watched it back to make sure that oh before God, we, we released it out, no, but um, <laughs> make sure it was okay. It made me laugh where you pointed out and I thought, because probably somebody would ask that, you were like, you can't use it in the Princess Theatre and you can't order a drink when you're on the toilet. And I was oh, thinking, yeah. Would anyone think that you could do that? I'm thinking, Maybe. yeah. yeah somebody, you, would. somebody would. Somebody yeah. would. Yeah, I think you could just sit on the toilet and order yourself yeah. a, a beer. Yeah. You but can't. It's, it's not just beer, it's food. You know, <laughs> Not on the toilet. No. <laughs> but wherever you are that's not the toilet, in the yeah. toilet and the theatre, you can order like pizzas and everything like that. It's yeah, brilliant. It's Honestly, we could sit here and talk about how good it is all day, <laughs> but it's absolutely amazing. And the little medallion itself is really cool. It's got your name on there. I think the date of the... Cruise, and then I think they are colour coded depending on how many cruises you've done on with your, Princess like, loyalty tier, whatever they call it. I th I'm not sure what ours was. It was, our, we, first it was our first one. We were blue. Was it yellow? Blue. 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 We were blue. blue. Mm -hmm. Oh, and don't worry, you haven't got to uh, charge it either. It lasts for the length of your cruise, so don't yeah. worry about that. And while we're talking about the app as well, it was good because it allowed you to book like shows and games, whatever you want to call them, yeah. all that kind of stuff that's Boot going on. Mark them. Yes. Yeah, so you could see what was on. It allowed you to do that about three weeks before, mm -hmm. so you could look like the entertainment that was going on throughout the day, you quizzes. Could, you and... could book your restaurants for every night of the cruise yes. that you wanted. It, it told you so much information before, because that's what I ate sometimes with some of these cruises. <sighs> I'm know. like, I want to know what's going on, and sometimes you, you get on on that first day of embarkation and you run up to your cabin and you read your little magazine or you log on to the app and you're like, what's on today? So I liked yeah. the fact that we knew a lot what was happening Everything. on the ship for that week. Yeah. And we could just plan out the week a little bit better. Especially, especially for someone like me that likes, I need to know well, now. Especially for us filming all these videos because <laughs> yeah. we have to do timetables and stuff like that. So it's good for us to rotor stuff in mm. and know what we want to do when we want to do it. Uh, another great feature was there's a chat feature on there. Yeah. And there's also, if you've got kids or a oh, husband who likes to gamble, maybe, you can also or track... Wife. <laughs> or wife. <laughs> maybe, yeah. You can also track everybody in your group with their medallion and you, it comes up on the little ship map where mm -hmm. everybody is. It's just good little things like that, you know, if you've got kids and you want to keep an eye on where they are and stuff. So if I just say to Kev, I'm just nipping to the laundrette to do some laundry and he looks, I'm busted because I'm in the buffet. I'm not at the laundry getting the clothes washed. Right, so first impressions when we walked on this beautiful ship. We were already absolutely excited because we were embarking from Canada yeah. and we were just, we were going to America. So we love America. So we were yeah. just excited to be going to the beautiful Alaska. But we walked onto this ship and we were like instantly just, wow. Everyone was there like, welcome on board. Yeah. And there was banners out. There was a guy singing. Yeah. It was just like, wow. Yeah, it was nice, like the sail away banners in yeah. the atrium and, and upstairs on the, the deck where the pool is. They had it all there because they had it on the screen. It's just nice that they actually made an effort on like some other cruise lines. <laughs> the way you just walked on and it's been like nothing. No. Yeah, so it was nice. It's had the wow factor. Yeah, 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 it really did. It was nice. It wasn't to say shiny and glitzy as an MSC one, but it was nice. Yeah. It was all yeah. lights and stuff everywhere. It was all gold. It was really nice. So we entered the beautiful piazza. The atrium. Atrium. We know it is the atrium yeah. princess. I don't know if that's just a princess thing. Call it the piazza. Yeah. Piazza. Yeah. Whatever you want to say. Piazza well, yeah. is very posh for us. We'll say piazza yeah. or pizza. No, it's not pizza because don't we'll get that confused with the restaurant. There. Piazza, yeah. yeah. But it was just, it was just a stunning ship. It had the nice staircases, mm -hmm. the glass elevator that went up a couple of floors. It was just, it just had the wow factor. Yeah. There was something special about walking on that ship. It had there like really was. little water fountain, it water had, features it did, in the atrium yeah. as well. Yeah, we've never seen them before. They were a bit noisy. If you'd watched our ship tour video, that was what the noise was at the start when Stacey started speaking. <laughs> it was oh, yeah. them two little water fountains. <laughs> we did eat by the water fountains. Yeah. <laughs> In hindsight, we wouldn't have done. It was the only place we could do it, to be fair. And like, 
the Sailor Way party, they had the, the entertainment team, they were there singing and dancing. You should have been outside, but we didn't because there was a little bit of rain, so we got moved into the mm-hmm. atrium, the piazza, and they did it really nice there. Honestly, Duval, the entertainment manager... Oh, he's a great guy. He yeah. was so funny. He proper worked his butt off. He was everywhere. He did everything on that ship, didn't he? Do you know what was special for me as well is... I think we mentioned this in the... I think you mentioned it in one of the food videos because you were on about how it has to cater to so many. There was 32. Yes. 32, I can't ask what the captain I said. Think so, yeah. Different nationalities on board that ship. And to me, that is just why I love cruising. Yeah. I just think that is just amazing that 32 different nationalities from all walks of life can just come together to share this just amazing yes. journey. I just, I think it's just amazing. Yeah, yeah. It, was, it was nice to be so multicultural. Uh, I think the Brits were the, one of the top five. <laughs> the captain actually said one night. He was British the nationalities. himself. Yeah. So I think it was like Brits, Australians, Taiwanese, yeah. Americans, Canadians. Yeah. So that was your top five, but we, obviously... We love our uh, friends from across the pond. So yeah, <laughs> when there's loads of Americans and Canadians yeah. and things on there, we're like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> we never mentioned it before. We'll mention it now. We had an inside cabin. One, it was cheaper. <laughs> and two, it does us. That's all we need, really. It was really. our first ever inside cabin as yes, well. Yes. And it was a really nice cabin. It was very big. It, yeah, it was the biggest inside cabin I've seen. I know we had an outside on the MSC... There was a family room, but this one was huge, really. I thought it was a really good space. Well, after these videos, when the P&O Arvia ones go out, we had an inside cabin then, and I think I wish we'd done it the other way around because it seemed so small. very small compared to the one that we had on yes. Princess. But, uh, yeah, it was a big one. Yeah, it was <laughs> nice. It was a bright cabin, loads of space, loads of wardrobe space. Mm. The only one thing that was a little bit thingy to us at the start was it had a shower curtain, not a glass screen. Yeah. Well, it never leaked out. Didn't there was a nice lip at the bottom, so it was fine. We have done a thorough video on yes. our cabin if you want to go and check that out for more yeah. detail and also probably one of the best cabin stewards he, well he is the best one that we've ever had yeah. on any ship such a great helpful guy he was so nice it was um it was my birthday on board the ship and he left a written note yeah. and some fizz stuff we don't drink so what was it it was some at fizzy Fake champagne whatever vinegar, you call that vinegar to me but yeah. it was a nice touch anyway he left that for prosecco us. or something Prose- like that prosecco <laughs> that's the word i was thinking of yeah not fizzy vinegar <laughs> but no. he left some prosecco he was a great guy yeah we'd go sometimes though we'd go down for dinner because we had to book it in on the app yeah um we'd have dinner boot and we had to get to the point where it was like, right, dinner's at seven, so we better leave the room about six o'clock because we'd <laughs> chat to this guy for literally yeah. nearly an hour. And so we one time we had to say to him, oh, gosh, we're going to be late for dinner, so we had to go. So we timed it, so we left about an hour because we knew we'd end up talking to him for about an hour. Because there was two turn down yeah. there, so he was there day and night. He was always there. And he'd worked for Princess for like 20-something yeah, years. 25 years. He, he knew everything about Princess, he yeah. told us about it, and he was just, he's such a great guy. He knew everything about yeah. the ports, the company, he'd been around the world, he'd been like New Zealand, he, he said he'd been everywhere. Yeah. He loved his job. <laughs> he, was, he was, like say, the happiest, cheeriest guy we've ever seen. Yeah, he was hard working, honestly, yeah, even though we stopped him talking for yeah. an hour. <laughs> so entertainment wise, this ship was jam-packed from morning to till evening with just so many things going on activities shows you name it quizzes they had it so you had the main prince the main theater the princess theater some of the best shows that we've ever seen like really really decent talent on there amazing it was really well choreographed yeah good singers amazing sets that was for the in-house team yeah. because they had a mixture of in-house, the princess entertainment team, and then they had external people who came on. I don't know if they'd been on America's Got Talent and, you know, those kind of people who do the cruise scene now. They were just amazing because mm. that's one thing on these um, cruise ships that you aren't always into is some of the, the entertainment. And if you like it, I'm like, wow, it must be good because you're quite yeah. like, you're not into these kind of... la dark da kind of... Oh, show that. <laughs> nah, but they well, were brilliant. As soon as there's a guy on his head playing the piano, you he were was all, great. You were all for him. He was absolutely fantastic. That's that's the kind of guy I'm saying. Who, I don't know if he's been on America's Got Talent or something like yeah, that. Yeah. Where he just goes from cruise to cruise, and he was amazing. Like, say, doing handstands, playing the piano. 
he's in one of the videos. We did put a clip of him in. Might yeah. have been the disembarkation one. Like I say, oh, the buffet song. He made this, he did this buffet song. I can't remember what song he covered. If My Way by Frank, Frank Sinatra. Yes. Yeah. Go watch that in the disembarkation vlog because it's hilarious as well. I only did one about the cabin steward. That was funny as well. Oh, yeah. Well. You've got a friend. <laughs> yeah. And also in the theatre as well, in the day, uh, I don't think it was every day, but they had uh, people coming in, doing talks about Alaska, mm. about the wildlife, the rainforest, all those kind of things. So that if that's what you're into. The, the only problem was, though, the one that we wanted to watch, we couldn't really fit it in. Because I think it was when we went to Juno, we wanted to go watch one, yeah. but it was literally ending as you were uh, getting ready to disembark because it was a late disembark, uh, late port day, sorry, not disembarkation. Yeah. I think we got there, you, you were getting off the ship in Juno at two o'clock. I think it finished close to that. And, and we, we wanted, wanted to get be off. off and ready, didn't we? So it's a shame we messed up. They also, on the last day of the cruise, had the captain in there and the head engineer yeah. up on the stage and he talked to all about cruising and being the captain of this ship. That was really, really he was doing interesting. A &A, you could ask him questions. Yeah, yeah that, was, he, that was amazing. He was saying that he was the captain that was on the news on another princess ship when COVID hit. They wouldn't let the ship come into dock in San Francisco or something maybe like that. I think so, yeah. And he was the one saying. who was like, no, you're letting us in. And he's like, you, he knows everything. He was saying like, I was giving him this and this and he did eventually let us in. It was, it was interesting just listening to all that. Yeah, it's a lot of some amazing stories. People mm -hmm. asking him like what happens in emergencies yeah. and stuff and he was telling you, it's really interesting. So check that out if yeah. you are on board a princess cruise ship, whether they do it on the mall, it's definitely on the Discovery mm -hmm. Princess one. So as well as the main theater, you had a lot of smaller venues. So you have the Princess Live Lounge where there was presentations on in there quizzes, yep. karaoke, and then there was somewhere called the Vista Lounge, which was similar to Princess Live. Again, I think it had, I think that's where the late night DJ was, oh, but again, it was karaoke, movie quizzes, yeah. trivia kind of things. Yeah, all different things going on. Yeah, and then there was Take 5, which I really liked. Oh that yeah, that was a good, jazz bar. That was a really small, intimate place with like, say, lovely jazz music on. That was yeah. really cool. Yeah, yeah. And they also had, we didn't watch any because it was Alaskan cruising. It was a little bit too cold for us, even though they do offer blankets. Yeah. They have Movie Under the Stars, which I think actually Princess trademarked that term, Movie oh, right. Under the Stars. Oh, that's I where, that. yeah, I think they trademarked the Movie Under the Stars thing. And obviously that's where they've got the screen on the um, outside deck and they were showing movies. And they had, I believe they had concerts on yeah, in the day. Yeah, they had loads of concerts on because yeah. I can't remember seeing them. Like, it was like Coldplay, Sting, all that stuff. I was going to say, all I've got embedded in my mind is leaving Vancouver. The Sting concert was on. Yeah, yeah. So we were leaving Vancouver and he was singing, I'm an Englishman in New York because yeah. we were leaving Vancouver. <laughs> Could have been changed it for us, an Englishman in Vancouver. But, <laughs> but yeah, um, as well, we'd never seen a casino so busy no. It was like we were back in Vegas. Like, all the time, them tables were on fire. Everyone's on the slot machines. It was nuts. It was anyway, because we cruise, we've we uh, cruised a few times now from Southampton. Yes. And whether it's just not a bigger thing over here in England, but you guys in America oh, and Canada, you love your gate, your poker, poker and, your and blackjack. things. Yeah, yeah. yeah it, was it was so not, busy. Yeah, it was constant all the time. They'd also got the Wakeview Bar, which was at the after the ship. Like I say, somewhere... Because this, this uh, Discovery Princess does go to, like, Mexico after Alaska. Yeah, like when the Alaska that, season finishes. Yeah, so that's more of a, a warmer climate mm -hmm. kind of area. We yeah. like these areas, but it was too cold to yeah. go and sit out there all night and watch the sun. It would have been nice to go and watch the sun go down, but it was yeah. a bit cold. <laughs> there was a lot of other, you know, bars. We're not going to run through them all. They were just the ones that kind of we enjoyed. There's more in the atrium and stuff. But there was a really good one... Uh, in the retreat, which is the adults only area, the adult side, that, yeah, the pool. which was next to the sanctuary. If you watch that video, mm -hmm. uh, that's an adults only area. So, you know, there wasn't really any kids on this one, No. but maybe if you're going on one of the warmer weather ones around the holiday time, you know, I'm um, screaming kids. <laughs> that's a nice little quiet area go. Once again, going back to the piazza, it was a great area. Cause like I say, that's where they did the sail away party cause it wasn't outside, but gala night, it was a really nice area. The captain came out, did his speech in there. They had one of those champagne towers where they let you go up on a podium and hold like a bottle, pour some and the professional photographer would take your photo. That was a nice little touch as well. Yeah, what I loved as well. So 
more or less every single day all the senior officers came out and you could play games against them. It yes. was called Officers versus Guests. Yeah. And we played beer. It wasn't beer pong. It we was, don't know what else it's called. It was like that, but obviously you didn't have the beer in. But yeah. you chucked the little ping pong ball into the cup. They were doing that. They were doing where you chucked the like bean bags into the, what did they call it? Corn oh, something? Corn hole. Corn hole, that's yeah. it. And that was really fun. And it was just, they came out for photos. I've never seen so many. Normally on other cruise ships we've been, you've seen the senior officers kind of walking around going from one place A to B. You sometimes but they were actually, the buffet or something. Yeah, they were just, you know, emerging themselves yeah, in, in all really the good. fun. And yeah. like you say, it was, that was really good. I liked yeah. that. And then just quick, they did have like kind of an in-house little band in the piazza. Mm. It was it was like a good little mix because there was like a guy on a guitar, was it? He was a bit like yeah. reggae-ish. Yeah. There was um, like a Latin guy. There was the the European woman, so they had like a good little mix of singers there. Yeah, because normally, um, it's traditionally when we've been on other cruises, it's just, it tends to be just, say, a piano player. Yes. And it was nice that, like you say, they mixed it up a bit, and it was just a bit more modern yeah, to the likes have, of us. Yeah, they did have another one as well. They had a piano player and a, just a, a singer as well. Yeah. But they, it was two blokes, and they were a bit more modernish rather than just like your, your older Fira kind Lynn. of... Yeah, that, I couldn't think Lynn? of it. Yeah, them kind of songs, so Real it was a bit nicer. Again. Yeah, yeah, that's the one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so they had they had some jacuzzis. They had obviously a pool on the main deck. Yeah. They had table tennis, a running track. There was a football and basketball court. Mm. And obviously, there was you could go and use that just on your own. Or they had scheduled games if you yeah. wanted to go and play other passengers. Mm. If you wanted a game of football together, you could get to know each other yeah. and have a chat and things like that. There was just honestly from morning till night. There was constantly something going on. Yeah. It, it was fantastic. There was also, they called it mini golf. <laughs> it was on, I think, what the class is, deck 19. <laughs> it was about, literally, it was probably about this big. I think it had like, it wasn't crazy golf or anything like that. It was like no. three little practice putting holes. Yeah. That was all it was. I think they just made use of... It was a random little a space. A random bit of space that they were like, let's just put a bit of green down, some yeah. holes, and yeah. We nice. wanted to hit them off the ship and... We said the crew was, members go out on little boats to get them in. That would have been a brilliant game. Like a driving range, but in yeah, the back of the ocean. Off the, yeah, in the back of the ocean. <laughs> don't think they would have gone for that. Right, on to the food now. It's the main thing. It's what we're all bothered about. Cause it's what we all eat for the length of your cruise. Now, we didn't do any specialty restaurants this time. But in all fairness, we didn't feel like you needed to. No. The food was, was fantastic. Top notch yeah. from the main dining rooms to the buffets to the pizza restaurant to the food by the pool. Yeah. It was all great. Now, the main dining room, like we did say about two, three weeks before, you could go on and uh, on the app and book each night for different times, one night, one time for every single night. I explained it in the app video. And we also did a main dining room food video as yes. well where I explain all about booking it. So go and check that out for more detail. Yeah, yeah. but I feel like really good quality I, f I feel like we joked about it i think we ate our way around all the fish in alaska yeah we had alaskan salmon alaskan halibut something else we had alaskan baked alaska i know it's not alaskan but we had baked alaska it's the only cruise ship where we haven't done any of these specialty no. restaurants and came off it and thought well if we went on that ship again or cruise with princess yeah. in the future we might give some a try but i didn't come off thinking like Oh, we need to do. We needed to have done a specialty no. restaurant because the food was just amazing. But yeah, three main dining rooms: the Skagway, the Juno, and the Ketchikan. Yes. So there's three ones on there. But go and check out the food video for more in-depth review. Yeah, yeah, it was really nice. Uh, like I say, the buffet. What was it? Was it fresh World Marketplace? Something like World that. Fresh Marketplace. Yeah, some of them. We did a video on that as yes. well. <laughs> now I cannot explain how good this buffet was. Yeah. Now, I know a lot of you say that Royal Caribbean's buffets are up there. We haven't tried them no, yet. We do want that to. That is on the list. Yeah. But this, for for us, was like, wow. It had a different theme every night. There was like Mexican, American, yeah. Indian. There was loads of different theme nights. And every time we walked through, it all looked really nice. The nights mm -hmm. we tried it, it was top notch. It had a, its own... Um pastry section oh stuff. yeah oh some of the bet if you like your pastries like me and your bread yeah then you'll absolutely love it on there okay some random bits breakfast for some reason there was carrots and cauliflower what did i say though before <laughs> 32 different nationalities yes. on that cruise ship so you know you've got to try and cater to 
yeah. to, you know, as but many as you can. Don't worry, there was plenty of sausage, bacon and eggs on there uh, if that's yeah. what you want for your <laughs> Pancakes, waffles, yo, there was so much. So another included restaurant was Gigi's Pizza. Oh. I think it was formerly called Alfredo's on other Princess right. cruise ships. I think it's now known as Gigi's. Uh, but that was, oh my goodness, Wow, well, we've been on MSC before, and obviously it's an Italian yes. cruise line. We were like, wow, their pizza is delicious. No, that beat MSC's, and that MSC's pizza is nice. Now, if you watch the embarkation oh. video, yeah. you'll know that we went to the buffet, and then literally 20 minutes later went to Gigi's Pizza. Yeah. <laughs> we were expecting pizzas, not pizzas, and we had one each. That and we were very full. Oh, but yeah, so nice. They do them there in the big... Um, pizza oven, yeah you watch them make them fresh there that yeah. was delicious but also outside as well they had a place called slice um, and that was by the by, outdoor mm, pool oh. and you could get pizzas by the slice there but it was the pizza from Gigi's. so yeah, if you're out made, by the pool by, yeah. yeah it was made there but it's the same but it's exactly the same pizza i do like a meat feast <laughs> now i had a slice of meat feast and i have to say it's the best meat feast pizza i've ever had so I've eaten a lot of pizza, as you can tell by its body. <laughs> so take that as high praise. It was delicious. Don't expect no Domino's pizza. This was proper pizza. And another great place that was all included as well was the International Cafe. Now, that mm. was set in the atrium, the piazza. 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 Yeah, the bottom deck. Was it deck five or deck six? One of them. Two One of them. <laughs> but it was open 24 hours a day, seven every all seven days of that cruise. Yeah. And you could get ready-made sandwiches, um, pastries, um, like little uh, quiche things. The, the best way to think about it is a Starbucks. Yeah. You get your pay, yeah. you get your like your premium coffees. Did they call them premium coffees? They were they were dependent on your drinks yes, package. Yes, they so weren't included in that. If you haven't got a drinks package, you wouldn't be able to get the teas and coffees from there. You could pay for them. Yeah, you could pay for them. Sorry, them. yes. Yeah. yeah, but they were, even then they were reasonably priced. Only the food was included though, yes. not the drinks. The, I mean, like, I think like a... Uh, one of your fancy lattes was about mm. three your three dollars fifty or something. So yeah, it wasn't too bad no. at all. But we thought that was a great little place for. We used it on disembarkation day. Um, saves going the main dining room or the buffet for yeah. breakfast just because it'd be manic in there. It's also a great place as well because when we were getting off at the port, mm. we wanted to be, to be up and ready. Yeah. So we'd go there and get like an egg and cheese muffin and kind of eat that quick, and then um, we could then get off the ship then so it's a great place if you don't want you know a full buffet or main dining yeah, and breakfast because some, some mornings you're not really hungry are you but no. if you're getting off in port you don't want to spend money in port so you might just want something or as well like say yeah if you've been off in port and you've been eating out there all day yeah, and then do you do don't want one. to go to the main dining room for dinner you can just go and grab a sandwich from there because like we said 24 hours a day yeah. or you're in a late nighter and you've had a few drinks and you're Toddling off to bed at three in the yeah. morning, you could get yourself a little sandwich, little sandwich yeah, on the yeah. way back to your room. Now, one good thing on this ship as well, which is the first for us, they had ice cream included and popcorn. Oh yeah, popcorn as well, fresh made popcorn there, so you could get your little Mister Mister mm. Whippy kind of little cones with sprinkles and stuff on you. Yeah, that was nice. It was quite nice ice cream actually. And then also, because Swirls was next to Slice, and next to Slice was the Salty Dog Grill, not the Salty Dog Bar. Which was this? Pub. Yeah, that was a specialty restaurant. That was it. Yeah, it was don't, confusing. Don't get them too confused. It's a bit it? silly, really. <laughs> salty dog. I think it's called Gastro Pub, which is the speciality one. Yeah. So there was a salty dog grill. grill yeah. Which was on deck sixteen by the pool, and that was really nice. You could get like hot dogs. Did you have a burger? I had a burger. Big yeah, hot it was dogs, nice. burgers, chicken oh, strips. They were nice. They were yeah. nice chicken strips. Fries, yeah. loaded fries. We saw one guy. <laughs> Honestly, he must have asked. You could have whatever you wanted. They didn't mind. No. He literally had, because they come in the red basket. Stacey loves the red basket if you've watched our video. <laughs> um, he literally had, he must have had a double portion of chips with like that nacho cheese on, mm. bacon, and then he had three hot dogs on top of that. <laughs> I don't, it was like this. Rinse and the hot dog rolls. <laughs> no, really. but it was like a mound. It was massive. And then the last night of the cruise, we were eating in the main dining room and the chefs came out 
and he was kind of thanking the, the crew basically for working hard that week. Yeah, yeah. And the crew came out to the baked Alaska and they did a little parade through the uh, restaurant. How many of them was there? There was loads of them. 20? You were getting your serviette yeah. and waving it around. Each one had the little baked Alaska walking around and they were like yeah. dead happy and stuff. Yeah, it was nice. It was, it was amazing, but I can honestly say yeah, hand on heart, we, we no problems whatsoever with the food oh, no. for that week. We didn't we didn't have a bad meal, or it was fan, it was amazing. The it one, was fantastic. And I, I did mention this in the video. The one only it's not even bad. It was personal preference. My halibut was a little bit uh, overcooked for me. Yeah, that if I was picking, that's it. Yeah. So that's how good it you was. You really had to pick. There was just yeah, it was just <laughs> it was really good. Right. So the last thing to talk about is the sanctuary on board the Discovery Princess. Mm -hmm. So that was a extra paid for private area at yep. the front of the ship. Now we have done a full video on this where we go into detail about pricing mm -hmm. and you know what you're kind of getting for your money to yeah. go in there. But it was a really nice place to go and we do recommend it, especially if you're on an Alaskan cruise and you've got, you'll most likely have a scenic day. That's it, yeah. And we went to the Hubbard Glacier and it was probably the best area of the ship to view that from really so we didn't mind paying it but we had a full day in there and it was um it was well worth it i mean yeah some people might think 60 dollars each a bit expensive yeah oh the f the food was completely Service different amazing in there. to all the other restaurants yeah. and stuff it was really really good they were really nice go watch it because <laughs> we were sitting there with like five towels and blankets on us because it was cold because that was the only problem though it was like open yeah. above it's not kind of closed off so the wind the wind was coming in a bit it's a nice area it's more you know if you just want to have it for sunbathing for the day it's more spaced out yeah. like the sun lounges compared to the main deck so if you just want a nice peaceful quiet day of sunbathing where it's just a bit more quieter more padded this they were like yeah. more padded sun lounges as mm -hmm. well uh, there was a Massive hot tub in there, jacuzzi in there as well. Yeah, it's well worth it. And like I say, definitely 100% recommend if you're doing a scenic day for sure. Yeah, especially, like I say, because we only had the inside cabin. Mm. If you've got a balcony, you might not yes, feel yeah. like it, but the money we saved having an inside, you know, we could have probably booked this every day for the whole cruise if we yeah, wanted. Yeah, you've got to look at it that way, haven't that's you? Right. Oh, that's actually a good that. point with all the food, because you get loads of food. Yeah and you know drinks are including stuff so it's something to look at so there we go we hope you've enjoyed our overall review of the discovery princess yep. and more importantly helped you out with tips on you know how much things have cost because even just on when we were on the p and rv cruising from southampton a lot of brits come up to us that recognized us from the videos yeah yeah and they were ve loads of you were very very interested in alaska yes you've you've done like the norwegian fjords and stuff now and it's like the next thing where yeah. i suppose if you cruise a lot alaska's like a proper bucket list low, like yeah. place that you want to go to so a lot of you are interested in that and i know a lot of you on the ship are saying like we you know do we mind how much does it cost? And we, we don't mind telling no, you no, this, no. we want you to know. We've already told uh, you we've already, we've already told you, yeah. And we don't mind sharing this information because if it helps you out and yeah. gives you an idea and, you know, get it booked and let us know if you go to Alaska yeah, and exactly. if, what you think of it. Yeah, because like they say, said, we've had people commenting as well. We've booked. Yeah. We're really interested. You know, thanks for the videos. It helps us out a lot. Mm -hmm. They've made our decision for us, you know. We like these comments. It's nice to hear from you, lot, from you lot giving us nice feedback. But basically, from that video, absolutely, it was our first time in Canada. Absolutely oh. loved Canada. Yeah. Really want to get back over there at some yes, point. Yes, definitely. Loved, absolutely. We want to try different cruise lines, but we will definitely, like say, probably the Sun Princess next year when it's out. Princess, mm -hmm. absolutely amazing. Yes. Probably our favourite cruise favorite, line yeah, out definitely. of the three we've done yeah, so yeah. far. Absol Princess was absolutely amazing. And again, just to be in our, we love America. Long before YouTube, we were traveling out to oh, America. We love America. And just to be back over there again, um, you know, to Alaska, it, it was it was amazing. And Seattle? I can't, like, I can't even get my words out. It was no. amazing. Yeah. yeah. Seattle was Seattle, Seattle to, was, oh yeah, we love Seattle. But went to the baseball. Yes. Yeah. Space Needle. Went to the original Starbucks. We got four Starbucks <laughs> cups from this uh, trip. I know people are interested. They always ask us if we got us mugs, so we ended up getting four. But 
Like I said, straight after this one, the mm -hmm. obvious stuff's coming out. Loads of you are interested in that one. And then we've got Summit Elf, uh, yeah. Summit Elf after them planned, yeah, which we're not in due telling course, you now. we'll tell you in due course. No. So uh, <laughs> if you want to know what that is, follow us on Instagram. Hit that subscribe button for YouTube as well. Mm -hmm. That's it. The series is over. So that's it. Yeah. Thanks for watching, guys. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.